What is a supernatural event that happened in your life that just cannot be explained? I had a phase in my mid-teens when I would read the obituaries in the local newspaper. I saw a name that was familiar as it was the same as a family friend. It had his full first, middle, and last names. I didn't say anything to my parents since I figured they already knew. A few days later my mom told me he died and I said I knew since I saw his obit. She said, he died last night in his sleep. I went back through the newspapers. My mom kept them for a week before throwing them out. But the obit wasn't there. When the real obit came out it had his first and last name but just his middle initial. This was almost 40 years ago and I still think about it. Early into my now wife and I's relationship I had a dream about her in childbirth. Very vivid. And long. Like I spent days in the hospital with her and everything was in a strange twilight. When it came time to deliver things went very wrong and she and baby ended up passing away. I woke up quite shook naturally but brushed it off. I am a nurse and have had to deal with traumatic OB situations before. And I chalked it up to me dealing with that stress through a dream. Six years later and my wife is pregnant. I have forgotten the dream by now. I get a call late into the third trimester while I am on shift. Wife is going to the ER for a bad BP. I get off my shift and go to meet her. As soon as I step into the room I remember my dream. It's the same damn room. Which is extra spooky because the hospital we were at wasn't even built when I had the dream. This is last year right when lockdown started. My wife is admitted they want to wait a week to deliver if possible. She will be kept in a twilight state until that time. So it's me in this room eerily isolated as the world around us is frozen and my wife is incoherent mere feet away. Lingering for days in this room I brushed off my dream. Trying to manage my anxiety and stress. Come showtime my wife gets ready to begin pushing and it's exactly the same scenario as my dream. Things start going poorly. But the DR thinks delivery is still possible. But at this point I finally freak out into full panic. And demand a c-section for my wife. The DR, I can't tell wants to argue but I think my outburst made her step back and reassess the situation and she made the call for emergency c-section. Took 10 minutes for me to get taken back and as I'm in the or I see my baby come out lifeless. They do everything they can and manage to resuscitate her. In the meantime my wife is doing poorly and they are scrambling to control her bleeding. I follow the baby out knowing there's really nothing I can do. Baby gets life flighted to another hospital. But before we go I see my wife stable and headed to the IQ. Both my wife and baby are critical but alive. Today they are both thriving and my baby is 16 months and just a tornado of energy. I don't know that they would be alive if not for that dream and it causing me to freak out and demand a change in plan. Many years ago, my parents had separated and my father was planning on taking a trip across the country to California. He was pretty excited about it. I talk to him the day before he's leaving, wish him well and tell him I'll talk to him after he gets to California. The day of his trip, he calls me and tells me he decided last minute not to go, refuses to really get into why, just says he changed his mind. Seemed really odd for something that he had been planning for a couple months. That night I'm sitting at my girlfriend's house and we're watching the news. And they report that as Air Flight 1493 the flight my dad was supposed to be on collided with another aircraft while landing in Los Angeles. About 25% of the people on the flight were killed. Hard to know how my dad would have made out. Because it really depended on where you were sitting. Front versus. Back of the plane. It was several months before he finally told me that night before he was supposed to leave. He had an extremely vivid dream that he died in a fiery plane crash. So vivid that it scared him out of flying that day. My dad is a Marine Corps Vietnam veteran who saw combat. I can only imagine how vivid the dream must have been. To scare him out of getting on that plane that morning. Super minor compared to many in this thread. Night before Thanksgiving 3 years ago I was across the country at my parents. Driving back to theirs with my now wife from a friend's house. As we draw near. There is some type of bundle in the middle of the road. I stopped and pulled off to move it. And it turned out to be a barred owl that got clipped by a car. Long story short I spent the rest of that night getting the owl into a puppy cage. Gave it some food and water. And the next day dropped it off at a wildlife rescue center. I got home the next week. All the way across the country. New Jersey to Oregon. I stepped outside and there was a barred owl sitting on my fence watching me. It was gone by the time I got back. 
but now I know I'm straight with all owls. When the owls rise up and they will you will be okay. This didn't happen to me, but a very nice old man and his wife used to live a few streets over from us. Well she got very sick and his son flew in to help watch and care for her. A few weeks later she moved to hospice and later died. The night she died her husband and son drive home and they were talking about what to do for the funeral and the husband asked, do you think she'd want some person to attend and they both said they heard the dead mom wife in the back seat say no thank you. I have an idea of what may have happened, but I cannot definitively say how this happened. My father died in 2000 in my parents house. I was over one night pretty late after my mother had gone to sleep. I swear I could feel my father's presence, as I was right in the spot where he had died. They believe he had a heart attack while laying on the couch, tried to get off the couch to call for help but fell on the floor and died, though no one else was home when it happened. I was on the couch when this happened. Anyway, I thought to myself, this is stupid. People don't leave essences behind. I'm not feeling anything, so, I say out loud, if this is really you, dad, knock a box of cereal off the shelf onto the floor. I wanted to pick something I didn't think could happen by accident. I went into the kitchen and watched the shelf with the cereal on it for a few minutes and nothing happened. Since it was almost midnight, I decided to sleep in my old bedroom. I woke up the next morning and went downstairs and a box of cereal was laying on the floor. I say to my mother, did you knock that cereal onto the floor? She said no. It was like that when she woke up, so... What the f, man. However, my mother had a cat. I'm guessing the cat did it, but I don't know for sure. If she'd gotten on the shelf, everything would have been knocked around and messy from her. Everything was else was in its normal position. Just the box of cereal was on the floor. I mean, regardless, it has to have been the cat, right? The night my friend took his own life I had a sudden urge to call him. I'm in Canada and he was in Atlanta at the time. I didn't call because I was out partying with friends and got the news the next day when I woke up. I feel like I missed the chance to save a friend but my dad says it was him letting me know he was gone but was going to be okay. I'm sorry I didn't reach out bud. I regret it all the time. Not me, but my mother. She tells two stories. One time her doctor changed her blood pressure meds. It caused her to pass out on the kitchen floor. She had a near-death experience that's similar to what a lot of people describe. A tunnel of light. Dead family members coming to see her. Incredible feeling of joy. Etc. My uncle. Her brother. Was maybe 10 years older than her. Back in the 60s. He had a boat and used to take it from Florida to the Bahamas. It was a trip he had made many times. One day he left in the boat and vanished. A short time after. She was at work. And her phone rang. It was a woman. Is this Carol? Yes. I just wanted you to know that your brother died an honorable death. Then the woman hung up. My son, now 10, was 4 and was able to name my grandmother, by name, by a picture of her when she was in her 20s that was in storage that my mom and I were going through. She died before my wife and I even met. He said she was the lady who taught him how to do his silly laugh. Context. His silly laugh as we called it was a laugh that sounded just like my grandmother's. The reason it was so specific and silly was that my grandmother had a brain aneurysm when my mom was in her teens. It paralyzed the left of her body, including vocal cords and lips, and gave her a very distinct and odd sounding laugh. I was out with my parents, and it was late coming back home. At around 2.30 am we were at a traffic signal. A homeless guy comes and knocks on the window of the seat where my mother was sitting. As she rolled down the window to give him money, he said check what is happening at your brother's house he proceeded to take the money and walked away, probably thinking that he was a bit crazy in the head. We didn't bother and went home. Next morning mom gets a call from her brother's wife, he has had a heart attack, at 2.30 am. I live in a city and my brother lives in another city that is around 1000 kilometers away. He visits sometimes but not quite often, on an average of once every two years. On one day around 7 years ago I was sleeping on the couch in the living room at my apartment. I woke up suddenly on my brother sitting just beside me and I was shocked surprised started greeting him and asking him about how is he doing and what pleasant surprise it was. Next thing I realized that this was a dream as the doorbell was ringing which woke me. Went to open the door and guess what? It was my brother who came to surprise us. 
This literally had me speechless. Don't have any explanation and I think sometimes you don't need to have one. When I was a kid, about 10-12ish, I was carrying a load of laundry upstairs home alone while mom was out doing errands. We have this weird carpet runner over our hardwood stairs that's only really attached at the top of the flight but otherwise not fitted or secured to each individual stair. So naturally I step on an air bubble of carpet with my vision obscured by the laundry and fall backwards while bear hugging a bunch of blankets. I specifically remember thinking welp, guess I'm about to die while almost airborne with just my big toe left on the carpet when I felt two hands, one on either side of my shoulder blades. Give me a firm shove that launched me back up on the step and diagonally against the stair rail. I assumed mom somehow silently came back early without announcing herself and turned around to thank her while still clinging to the railing. But no one was there. I scurried upstairs to put my things down while calling her name and walked the house afterwards to check if any doors were unlocked or if her car was there. I finally resorted to calling her cell where she told me she was hitting up a few more stores. It still feels like there's a presence on that stairwell like someone's watching but in a protective way rather than sinisterly. E. Thanks for all the awards. I'll have to holler to the stairway ghost and let it know the internet loves it. I had a dream once about my high school best friend who had moved out of state and started a family. I hadn't seen her or spoken to her in at least 10 years and had never met her child. Except seeing pictures posts on Facebook and commenting on them. In my dream I was walking down a street at night and out of nowhere her little girl appears next to me and I asked her, where is your mama, why are you by yourself? I remember her taking me to some bushes near a random house on the street and finding my friend in bad shape, beaten up or something, on the ground and I remember running to the door of the random house screaming for help and to call the police. This is all I can recall from the dream but I think there may have been a little more. The next day, I wake up and think to myself. Man that was weird. Maybe I dreamt of her because we had just spoken a little in comments of a Facebook post. I should send her a message. I go on about my day. Go to work. Get home later that day and sit on my couch and scroll through Facebook. Bam. 1000 posts rest in peace. ETC all of them tagged my friend and her daughter. I thought what in the actual FCK. At that point there was no information as to what had happened. So I thought it must have been a car accident or something. Over the course of the next few weeks to months, more and more information came out and it was not an accident. My friend and her sweet baby had been murdered by some animal. I won't refer to them as a person. This happened about 5 years ago. I still remember the main parts of the dream vividly. I still am a little horrified that I had this dream that night. When it was happening possibly. I haven't been able to tell anyone else about it either because just thinking about it gives me chills. Working as night security for a small office at a sanitation plant. Building was a single entrance and you had to check in at the security station to get in or out. A worker shows up and checks in saying he needs to take care of a few things and grab some stuff. So I check in his ID and flip a few lights for him then go back about my business. Fast forward a few hours and my shift is about to end. I still haven't seen the guy come back. So I go patrol the building to find him and literally can't find him anywhere. He's not in any of the areas I turned lights on for him. No other lights are on. And he's not in any other rooms. I stop by security to see if we just missed each other and he's trying to leave. But nobody is there. I do a second patrol and still no signs. At this point I went to check cameras to see where he went. But he's not on a single camera except the one covering the entrance and security station. He turns down a hallway and never shows up on the next camera down said hall. At this point I logged it as an incident, and GTFO right as the relief shift showed up. Next day my boss calls me and says that worker had been on vacation out of state for several days, and wouldn't return for several more. Nobody could offer any explanation to what happened. Imagine finally having a decent out of body experience and you end up at work instead of like, some tropical beach. Poor man astral planed into work while on vacation. That's some job dedication there. My granddad died when I was 7, but, by his own words, I was his absolute favorite, partially because I am the splitting image of his mother, even into adulthood. When I was 21, I was set to give birth to my first son. I was about to get into the elevator to L&D when a man came in saying that he a volunteer and he helped me and my husband find our way. The elevator was slow, 
but we spent the time talking about what a blessing children are and how they grow up so fast. Here's the thing. He looked and sounded exactly like my granddad same stature, same blue grey eyes, same faint Scottish Canadian accent, same car keys, checked shirt, and sky blue cardigan. Even spookier is that the nurses said they don't have any older male volunteers in that particular building. I don't really believe in ghosts but I am absolutely certain granddad paid me a visit that night. My brother passed away in 2018 suddenly. About 3 weeks after I was having surgery on my hand I was waking up from surgery and my brother was standing in the doorway. I started freaking out and the nurses were thinking I was in pain but I couldn't tell them my dead brother is over there. He visited again when I was in labor last year he told me he was so proud of me and that I can't do it because I'm strong like a viking. I was in labor on his birthday and gave birth at 1.12 am. When I was going to my family's home I got in a sub going down the road. This was in Bangladesh at the time and after taking the sub the next 2 hours would be a highway going down a forest. I was sitting shotgun and along the highway there was an old man walking down the highway. He was hitchhiking and the driver decided to pick him up. He insisted on sitting in my seat and obliged as he was an older man. About an hour down the drive our car collided with a bus and the shotgun seat was mangled up. We all got out and we looked around but we couldn't find the old man that insisted on taking my seat anywhere. Stories like these are rare but I didn't believe them. We all know the man sat in my seat and we all saw him. But he was nowhere to be found. This made me mad for some reason. Imagine a hitchhiker begging for a ride only to demand shotgun. I'd be like, F off, then I'd be killed by a bus. Well when I was around 6 years old I was walking down the stairs no one was behind me and all of a sudden I remember getting chills then feeling a faint hand on my shoulder before I got basically pushed down the stairs. I was alright a few cuts and bruises nothing serious but I still remember the feeling of the invisible hand on my shoulder. It haunts me. The only way I can explain this one is wishful thinking. My mom and dad were codependent, and they liked it that way. They didn't want other people, other than the kids. They were completely happy to be just wrapped up in each other. My dad died the day before his birthday in a hospice center. Afterwards, it was like he was still home. His touch lamp beside his recliner would go on by itself. The recliner would rock like someone was getting in it. And sometimes, my mom or my sister would hear my dad saying, Honey, fix me a cold drink, that was exactly how he'd ask my mom to fill up his massive mug with Sprite over ice. My mother died less than a year and a half later. After my mother died, there was never another sign of either of them being there. They've been gone now for close to 14 years now. I was about 15 and trying to sleep but having an asthma attack. Late in the night I started hearing a rhythmic breathing from the floor next to the bed. It wasn't scary, more comforting, and it wasn't me. Because my breathing sounded way more effed up than that, it helped me calm down and get to sleep. Even though I was still sick, I was able to get my hands on an inhaler in the morning. At the time I thought it was a friendly ghost. I later rationalized that maybe I was hearing a family member through the heating ducts. What I realized years later, when I had a dog, was that it had sounded exactly like a big dog sleeping next to the bed. So now I'm 50 stroke 50 on whether a ghost dog came to visit me. Or my own dog time traveled back about 10 years before she was born to comfort me. Or my own dog time traveled back about 10 years before she was born to comfort me. Sounds exactly like the thing dogs would do if they could time travel. One night I had a dream about my grandpa, who had died almost 20 years prior. We were in his home, and he kept telling me we need to clean the house. We need to get the house ready. When I asked him why, he just said she's coming home. My grandma, his wife of 50 years, died the next day. My siblings and I all had the same dream on the same night a year ago. It was exactly one year after my mum died and we all had a dream about her and she was in the same place and was speaking to us. She reassured us that she was okay and she was with her mum and my dead siblings and that her dad is in the bad place. The next day we all realized we had the same dream. We even all independently drew a picture of the place we saw her and wrote down the name of the place it resembled. Most of my siblings took that as an actual message from my mum but my youngest sister and I like to believe that we have all developed some freaky hive mind low level telepathy lol. Was in college walking to class, went to cross a busy street and a hand grabbed my shoulder, quite hard, and stopped me. A car zoomed by that would have killed me. 
Nobody was behind me or anywhere close enough to have stopped me. Guardian Angel? Had a premonition I'd be involved in a car accident one morning on the way to work as I got out of bed. It was a very strange thought and I considered taking an alternate route but did not. As I got onto the highway it was raining and a car flew past me, hydroplaned, and slammed into my car. In high school, I was getting peer pressured into doing something I didn't want to do, and would have gotten in a lot of trouble had a teacher come by, but I felt I didn't have a choice. I distinctly remember asking in my head if I have a guardian angel right now, please if I'm pull the fire alarm or something. I kid you not at that exact second, the fire alarm went off. This never happened at this school. It was so unlikely, I didn't expect it to actually happen. Nearly sh my pants. We immediately went to the assembly area along with the rest of the school, and I got out of the situation. Turns out at that moment someone in the school had accidentally triggered the fire alarm. I spent the rest of the day in shock honestly. IDK if this counts as supernatural but what even are the chances? That day introduced me to the idea of guardian angels and I have had many similar occasions since then where just in the nick of time, I've gotten out of potentially extremely bad situations either due to insane luck, or the nudge of something looking out for me. Not scary but still not explainable, when I was 22, I visited my grandma in her retirement home at Christmas. She was well, nothing out of the ordinary. A few days later I traveled to my then boyfriend across the country. Two days after New Year's I woke up at 2am crying, and I just couldn't stop. I wasn't really sad or overly emotional, but the tears just kept streaming down my face. Nothing like that ever happened and I was kind of confused, as was my BF. I fell back asleep a few hours later. Three days later I was informed that my grandma had died that night at about 2am. Due to the divorce of my parents communication was difficult and we were only informed after the funeral. I don't believe in anything supernatural, but it's hard to wrap my head around. Especially since nothing like this ever happened again. I have many, but here's the first that popped in my head. I was driving home from work after picking up my baby late at night. Not many cars around out on the country roads. The one stoplight out there was red for me so I stop. It turns green and have a sudden voice or thought or whatever in my head saying don't go yet. Nothing is coming I'm still sitting at the green light. Right as I let off the brake, a semi comes flying through his red light. I was shook. A family friend of ours, Gary, was terminally ill with cancer. He was a father figure to me and one of the few adult males from my previous life. I am a recovering alcoholic, that fully understood me. A friend and myself were in Moab, UT and found a hostel to sleep in for the night. I had a dream about Gary. He looked amazing, completely healthy and backlit and was wearing a multicolored sweater. He looked at me with concern in his eyes, pointed backwards and said, I'm not doing too good. I woke up a bit shaken because it felt so real. I told my girlfriend about the dream and she asked if I needed to call my mom to see how he was doing. I told her that it wasn't necessary because I knew they would call me if Gary passed. That day we drove from Utah to Colorado and stayed in another hotel. About 5am I woke up and my phone was ringing. I could see that it was my mom and I already knew what she was going to tell me. She broke the news that Gary had passed and I basically explained to her that Gary came and told me goodbye. I'm tearing up IRL right now writing this. The picture that his wife picked for his obituary was Gary in that multicolored sweater he was wearing when he came to me in my dream. There's a story from when I was 4-5 years old. My grandmother was looking through old family photos and asking me who the people were. We got to a picture of my grandfather, and she asked me who he was, and I said, Pop Poppy Jim. He died suddenly at home when my mother was 10, in the same house we lived in, so I never met him. She asked me how I knew that. I told her, oh he comes and tucks me in and tells me he loves me sometimes after you go to bed. When I was 12 I woke up with a start at 2.30 in the morning. I wasn't dreaming and didn't know why I woke up. My parents told me the next morning that my grandfather had had a heart attack and went for emergency surgery. He died at 2.30 in the morning. 